Hello everyone. Today's video is brought to us by the great people over at MuseScore. Today, I want to talk about my most used piece of music software, MuseScore. So if you're not familiar with it, it's an open source music notation software that is absolutely free for you to use. So if you want to download it and check it out for yourself, I'll leave links in the description of the video. Whenever I sit down to uh, start writing for a video, I open up two things, a text document and MuseScore because I know at some point I'm going to be making a music worksheet um, or transcribing some music for the video, and this is my go-to music notation software. So after you've downloaded it and open it up, uh, this is what you'll see. There's this uh, start window, and then you'll also see the main window of MuseScore behind it. Now, they just released an update for MuseScore that uh, included a brand new notation font, so like the actual music notes, and also a text font as well. Um, and they updated a bunch of like ease of use things, uh, quality of life things that um, hopefully we can take a look at as well uh, as we put in this piece of music. So I have this piece of music that I've been arranging that I want to put into MuseScore uh, because I want to see it uh, I want to hear it on the instruments in the software because I can only get so far when I'm playing it by myself on piano. When you open up MuseScore, this is what you see. Uh, there's a blank document uh, in that plus sign, and uh, any of your more recent scores that you've been working on uh, listed over here. And they also have uh, quick start videos over here uh, if you want to check those out too. Uh, we want to start a score from scratch. Um, and the title is going to be Yeah. Uh, it's a folk tune. So under composer, I'm just going to say arranged by me, and then, um, so here you can also just pick um, traditional ensembles. So under, uh, let's say band and profession, there's like a whole concert band, and it'll automatically populate uh, in score order all the instruments that are traditionally used for concert band, and then you can go in later and um, add instruments that you want to add or take any instruments out. Uh, for this one today, um, I think I'm just going to choose instruments because there's only three. Um, and I think we are looking for some woodwinds. I believe I want a bassoon for that good, good bass. I want a B flat clarinet. And I want a oboe. So uh, you can see over here that um, they're in order that I added them. And you can also change the order here with uh, these two arrows. And so if I move oboe down, I can have oboe uh, listed last and B flat clarinet bassoon above it. But one of the things that I noticed when they just did the update is this ordering. And um, if you're not familiar with it, most sheet music comes in a uh, specific order. The instruments are listed in a specific order, and it's called score order. And um, uh, it's basically so that there's some sort of uh, standardization in the scores so that uh, conductors or teachers uh, that are teaching the music will always kind of see the instruments in the same order that they're looking at. So if you're not familiar with that and uh, you've added all of your instruments, but you want it to appear in score order, all you have to do is come up here and say um, orchestral. And this will uh, put the instruments in order that they would normally appear in an orchestral score. So I think we can either pick orchestral or um, concert band. And they would probably be 
okay either way. Um, but I do want to use orchestral because it's just going to put it in the same order that I'm kind of arranging it. So the oboe is going to have the highest voice, the B flat clarinet is going to have that middle voice, and the bassoon is going to have the bass voice. Um, but you can always come back in here and, and change up the order if you want. Uh, this is going to be in E flat. It is in uh, six eight. There is a pickup measure that is just one eighth note. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, it's not very long, but we do want to repeat a couple of things. We'll start with 32, and if we need more, we can add more. Um, I would suggest adding a tempo marking. Um, you can always hide it later so that um, you can have a text tempo marking, uh, like Adagio or Allegro. But uh, this way, when you go to play back the score, it will always be playing back at this tempo. Um, instead of the default tempo. And I think it defaults to 120. But um, if you change this, let's see, I think it'll probably be like around 90. I'll try 95. But if you add this tempo marking here, then it's always going to start playing with this tempo marking instead of the default tempo marking. Um, so. Shepherd's Wife Waltz. <laughs> okay, so it did some math there and uh, put it into a dotted quarter note. Um, we can change that. But uh, this is what it looks like when you open it up. And I want to make sure that we're looking at... Okay, so I just want to make sure that we're looking at the Leland font, um, which is the new uh, the music notation font, so the actual notes of the music. Leland Smith, who was the author of the SCORE program, uh, which was a computer-based vector program for making really nice computer-designed scores. And um, some people at some of the big publishing houses still use it. Um, so it's really cool. It's a nice um, homage to uh, Leland Smith and all the work that he did. So. We are using uh, the new symbols font, and you can come back here. So there are a couple of different ways that you can actually put in uh, the notes. There is, of course, just using the mouse. So in um, this menu bar up here, you click on the N, and that brings you into um, inputting notes. When you don't have that click, then it's, um, you can do other things outside of just inputting notes. But once you click into that, this is inputting notes. And then up here we have all the way from a, a longa to a 128th note. And you can select uh, the duration that you want. And then come over here to your piece and start putting in notes. And um, and you know, that's that's okay. It's it's not bad, especially if you're working on a laptop or something like that where uh, you might not have a a MIDI keyboard with you. So the way that I'm going to show you for the rest of this video is putting it in with a MIDI keyboard. So uh, when I'm putting in music with a MIDI keyboard, um, my left hand is going to be doing one thing and my right hand is going to be doing another thing. My left hand is going to be on the keyboard selecting the duration that we need. So um, the uh, numbers on the keyboard also correspond to uh, the duration of the notes. So this is uh, three, four is the eighth note, five is the quarter note, and 
so on. So one through nine. The rest of it is basically putting it in with uh, the MIDI keyboard. So this uh, first note that I need is an E flat in the first bar, and it needs to be a quarter note. So I need to make sure that I'm on the quarter note and then just play the E flat. The next note is an eighth note and an F and a quarter note and a G and an eighth note and an E flat. So uh, my left hand is taking care of the duration and my right hand is playing the notes on the MIDI keyboard. So let me put in this first line and then um, I'll come back and show you how I put in um, the next line. So this is the first phrase, and um, let's see if we got the tempo right. It should be around. Bum, 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 ba, da. Okay, so as you can tell in those last two bars, um, it's actually a first ending, second ending, and it's a little fast, so I'm just going to double click into here and change this to uh, 57, and then click out of it, and now that's changed. So whenever we play, it'll always play at that uh, 57 beats per minute instead of defaulting to the 120. So uh, this is the first phrase. It's eight bars with that pickup measure. Five, six, seven, yeah, eight bars with that pickup measure. And uh, it looks a little funky on the page, uh, just because the phrasing uh, doesn't match up with the score. So one of the things you can do is uh, come over here to um, they call these palettes, and it's basically different tools that you can use um, to make changes in the score. And one of them is breaks and spacers. So if we click this triangle and drill down into it, there's a system break. So it's kind of like a line break where um, it'll just put uh, up to the measure that you selected in that line and push everything to the next line. So if I want to just have this pickup measure and these first four bars, I'm going to click on that last, uh, on the fourth full bar, and then click the system break. And now that first line just has the pickup note and the first four uh, full measures. And that's nice. I like that. Um, like I said, this also has a first ending, second ending. So we need to put in the repeats. Uh, the repeat's going to go back to the first full bar. So again, over in the palettes, uh, you should find repeats and jumps, and we can drill down into it. And we can put in uh, the start repeat symbol here, and then uh, the end repeat symbol there, and also... Uh, for first ending, second ending, we need, it's under lines, um, I'm not sure why, but just make sure that uh, the portion that is the first ending is highlighted here with your mouse. And then we say first ending, oh, this needs to go here, I believe. Get through the, I'm just going to click. No, we don't need it because we're putting in the first ending and second ending. Um, and then the second ending can go here. Uh, so if we play this now, 
So we have to put in that. Okay, cool. So our first ending, second ending is working now. And I also want to do a line break here. So uh, to have the end of the phrase with the first and second endings, um, I will highlight the measure that I want the break to be on, click the line break, and now we have the whole first phrase. So now I want to come to the B-flat clarinet. And if you'll notice, the key signature is different because it's a transposing instrument. Um, one cool thing that you can do in MuseScore, if you're not familiar with transposing instruments or just not comfortable with them yet, you can come up here and click Concert Pitch. And you saw that after I click that, the B-flat clarinet now shows the same key signature as the other instruments. So now you're going to see the B-flat clarinet line written in concert pitch. Just know that um, the clarinetist is going to be looking for a part that's written in B-flat. So don't print out the parts in concert pitch for the clarinetist, or they'll be playing the wrong notes. Um, so uh, if you're uncomfortable with transposing or just not used to it yet, then you can click that concert pitch button and all of the parts will be showing in concert pitch. Uh, just make sure that when you're done inputting the music to go back and make sure that um, it looks correct um, after you unclick the concert pitch button. Uh, sometimes there might be like um, an accidental that gets switched from a sharp to a flat for some reason in there. Um, but just make sure it looks uh, normal after you unclick the concert pitch. So for the B flat clarinet, um, going back to uh, inputting with the MIDI keyboard. Um, so I can push in on the keyboard and get out of note entry. Um, let's just show you that over here in this first bar, I put in this wrong note. It is an A natural and it should be a B flat. So you can come over here with your mouse and just click and drag. And uh, you can move it anywhere you need to, up or down the staff. Um, and you can replace uh, that note on the staff board if you need to. As long as it's the right duration, then um, you can just move it up and down with the mouse and then click off of it and you should be good to go. So uh, let's hear what this sounds like so far. Definitely need some dynamics in here. So, oboe. Uh, if we click on this first note here, so that it will also be part of the dynamics, and then come over to our palettes on the left hand side, drill down on the dynamics palette. Uh, we'll say mezzo forte for the oboe. 
And then for the clarinet, we want it to be backing off just a little bit. Um, and we'll make it piano. Okay. Let's see what that sounds like. So a little bit better in the blending. Um, now, do the a bassoon. Cool. All right. Uh, getting out of note entry, and then coming back to the bassoon. And we'll say mezzo piano on the bassoon. See what this sounds like so far. The only other thing that I want to fix is in the oboe, this should be tied. So there's this um, tie button up here, and it's, nope, not the second one, the first one. So the first note of the tie, select it with your mouse, and then click the tie button. And then on that note as well. Okay, so that's our first phrase. Now, on to the second phrase. And it jumps to the next screen because it's not going, but this is basically it. Uh, what do I need to fix? Ah, yeah, that needs to be not in order. All right, so starting from the second ending, what does it sound like? Get rid of uh, all of these measures by selecting them and then right clicking on it and say remove selected range and now it'll move the final double bar to this first page that we have so the next thing we can do uh, is generate the parts so this is the score that has all of the parts in it but if you're going to say hand this out to an ensemble you wouldn't hand out the score to everybody you would hand out an individual part to them so up here under um, uh, file go to parts and this is where you can select all the parts and so there will be a part that is created for the oboe uh, the b flat clarinet and bassoon you can uh, customize the parts a little bit more down here edit the part title um, add or remove instruments from uh, the score into the part uh, so you can have more than one instrument in a part but uh, for this i just want to generate one part for each of the instruments listed so i just clicked on all parts and i'm going to say okay so now we have a tab for the score as well as a tab for each of the individual parts and just like the score, we can go into each of the parts. Let's say, let's go into the oboe part. And or, um, we can come in here and select this measure, come over to our breaks and spacers palette, and make it look, make it look a little bit nicer for uh, the person reading the music. 
four, so it's all spaced out. Um, there's plenty of room on the page. There we go. And that doesn't affect how it looks on the score. If we click back to the score part, um, this is just for um, uh, this part here, just making it look nice. But I think if we do come in here and say we want to make this a uh, a slurred section so that they're not all um, uh, it's not all the same articulation, so you don't want everything to be ta 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 ta. You want some of it to be a little bit more legato. Ta 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 da 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 da. Um, we can come in here and put some slurs in these parts. And uh, if we go back to the score. Now those articulations that we put into the oboe part are in the score now. So there are some things that transfer back over to the score if you change them in the parts, which is nice because if you're working with a bunch of parts, um, it's nice to go into the individual parts and make um, detailed changes like that, articulations, um, any special uh, sort of instrument specific things that's kind of hard to get into when you're looking at 20 parts in a score you can come into the individual part make those changes and then they'll be reflected on the score as well so uh, let's go back to the oboe part and just add a few more of these articulation changes uh, so with these slurs, I'm just selecting the first note and the last note of the slur, um, and then clicking um, in the palette over here on the left, the slur uh, line. Uh, so I'll click on the first note, hold shift, and then click on the next note or the last note in the slur that I want. And then um, it'll know to connect the, the slur from that first note to that last note that I selected. So that's how you generate the parts for the score um, and how it kind of interacts with the score as well. So you don't have to uh, keep on regenerating the parts and regenerating the parts if you make changes. Um, they they will interact with each other as you make those changes, which is really nice. Uh, so we'll save this. And um, the last thing that I want to show you is how to upload it to MuseScore. Um, and so uh, when you're saving the, the score, the, the entire score, make sure that you're saving it as the uh, MuseScore file extension which is the .mscz, um, and I think it's just defaulted to that, so um, just make sure that you're saving it as that file type. Um, it'll work a lot nicer when you upload it. You can always come back and say export to a PDF file. Uh, you can make PNG images, uh, vector images, different audio file formats, uh, if you need to send this off to someone to just listen to the piece or listen to the individual parts. Um, so this is where you can uh, export to different file types. Um, but when you're saving the file, make sure you're saving it as the MuseScore file type. Um, once you go to MuseScore.com and log in, um, you can... Uh, make your own profile for free and it's a way for you to keep track of um, not only your music but also the music that um, you have found on MuseScore.com so there's thousands and thousands of piece, pieces of music on MuseScore uh, that you can look through and I've got some of my my hubs up here uh, film TV video games uh, March percussion uh, woodwinds um, and put them into those uh, different categories. 
but you can uh, find uh, pieces and favorite them, and that way you can come back to them easily if you want to. But if we want to upload, after you've logged in, uh, up here in the top right hand corner is this upload button. And then uh, it says save, share, publish your music online. Um, they have a really good tutorial on how to prepare a score for upload. Definitely uh, take a look at that. And um, so here's the Shepherd's Wife Waltz uh, that we were working on. It's the uh, new score file type, .mstz. And that's the one that we want to upload to MuseScore. So with that selected, we can say choose. Here on the upload screen, you can choose uh, if you want it public or private. Um, if you're working on something, but you want it saved out here, just in case something happens to your local file, you can save it as private. Uh, but this one will be public. Uh, ensemble type, we will say, Woodwind Trio, Shepherd's Wife Waltz. You can put uh, a little description in there if you want to. Okay. Um, so what music that this score is based on? Is this your original work? Um, so this is where you say if this is a completely original work to you, or if this is based on something else. So since this is not a completely original work by me, it's just arranged by me, um, then this is not an original work. Okay, so here we go. Um, they do have a entry for The Shepherd's Wife. And that's what this piece is based off of, is that Shepherd's Wife tune. Um, so uh, we will select this one. And uh, it's a traditional folk tune, so it's in the public domain, but it's not an original work by me. It's just arranged by me. So that's why we have to attribute it to the original tune. Um, done processing we've done that now we can say publish and there you go it's been uploaded to uh, new score other people can check it out and review it rate it uh, favorite it uh, save it to their profiles and um, yeah that is beginning to end start to finish um, writing music in new score and uh, saving it to uh, newscore.com. Thanks for watching. Um, if you have any questions about new score or uh, music notation in general, please let me know in the comments below, and um, I will see you in the next video.